You can enjoy history from old books, behind glass at museums, or like we prefer it, here at your leisure, with your own two hands. This week, we're showing you where you can go to get a real hands-on historic experience and have a bit of adventure along the way. Then follow me, Stephen Human, as I find out how motorcycles have brought one father and son duo together and how one event could do the same thing for you. And last but not least, Terry Wood takes us to the rodeo. But there are more horses here than you'd expect. At Your Leisure is next. A hundred and fifty years ago, two trains ended up nose to nose after racing each other all the way across the country. And with their cattle guards just feet apart, they drove the golden spike that connected a web of steel from one shore to the other. And we are walking on that grade right now. The very grade that connected the country from east to west 150 years ago. And you get to share that history with us. Now, this is not a history lesson. This is hands-on. Grade all the way back out to Kelton. Well, we went on, I think, a wonderful tour where we got a chance to see the Transcontinental Railroad in Utah as it would be in 1860s. Well, this changed the world. This was uh, the equivalent of the moonshot at this time. I mean, prior to this time, uh, if you wanted to travel from New York to San Francisco or wherever the case may be, it was very arduous. You'd either have to go to Panama and cross the Isthmus, you'd have to go around the Cape. It, it is absolutely amazing to think that men with shovels move that much earth and you're driving in many of the places along the original rail bed of the Transcontinental Railroad. You can take a mountain bike, you can, you can take, a, we went in automobiles today, but four, four wheelers, virtually anything that you can, you know, take out along that road. You know, they're going to see a, a lot of marshland, they're going to see the Great Salt Lake, they're going to see views unencumbered by any, uh, uh, anything other than just uh, the natural landscape. That what they'll see is that grade built by all these people by hand uh, completing the railroad. They'll see trellises, they'll see cuts which were made largely by hand and all that is still out there. We have one year before 2019 which is the 150th anniversary of the Transcontinental Railroad. Everything came together in Utah Two wonderful efforts, one from the west, one from the east, taking a number of years, and it all culminated in a Promontory Summit, May 10th, 1869. You want to be in Promontory, a Promontory Summit on Friday, May 10th, 2019, because this is going to be probably one of the coolest events that's ever happened in the history of the state of Utah. We hope that many people will come. We're hoping that many people will come over the summer and see the Promontory Summit. And uh, so that's what it's all about. Hopefully this will inspire people to think and to think big and to, to basically try to figure out what the next horizon is, what the next moonshot is, what the next you know, completion of a railroad is. I don't know what that is, but it's gonna be fun to see. Wow, there is like so much history out here and we're with all the right people to tell us about it. And you were afraid you were going to be bored today. Well, I wasn't afraid. I just like, <laughs> when you're coming out here, like there's nothing out here. But there is. To me, there's just wide open space. I love this. Oh, it's fabulous. I'm a desert rat, you know. Oh, well, you are. Anyway, uh, we have so much more to explore. We're going to get a closer look a little bit later in the show. But you know what? Poor Steven, he's finally got on his feet again and he's out exploring. <laughs> so here's our weekly travel adventure. You know, we're pretty much all just links in a big long chain. Our family goes back in time forever. It goes forward in time forever. And there we are, just a link right in the middle. But there's something special when we have something that we love that we can pass on down that chain to future generations. And that's what our travel adventure is about today, as we follow one father and son on a journey to share what they love. Ready to go.
when I do something that's really fun, I want to share it with my kids. To have them come and do it and enjoy it as much as I do really made my day. For our 50th anniversary, our kids asked us what we wanted for our, for our 50th anniversary. We said, I want a week of your time. I want to take all my married kids on street bikes up to Canada for 10 days. And we was able to pull that off. Bruce Stedman is a man who appreciates a good road. It doesn't matter where it is, so long as it's got some curves and will let him pick up a bit of speed on his motorcycle. It makes sense. After all, he ran Stedman's Recreation with his brother for decades and had his pick of the best bikes on the market. Now his son Russ is in that position, and what Bruce loved has found its way into his heart as well. I remember the first bike that my dad said, I think this is a good deal, it was a, it was a Yamaha Venture, and he said, Russ, I think you ought to buy this bike. And we had been on one ride with my mom and dad previous to that, and I will never forget it till the day I'm in the grave, because <laughs> it was our first time out of the gate, so to speak. You know, and we went to a different state. We went and saw Cortez. We went and saw Durango. And it was just mom and dad and Heidi and I. And it was amazing. And it didn't stop there. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren, all have come to own and love their own motorcycles. All because Bruce couldn't pass up the chance to feel the wind in his hair. Now semi-retired, Bruce rides out of Torrey or Kanab, Utah, as often as he can, taking advantage of highways like 89 and 12, both of which offer more beauty and winding pleasures than you'll ever find on the freeway. Highway 12 has become one of his and Russ's personal favorites, even acting as the main route for their annual motorcycle event, Red, White, and Road. Red, White, and Road gets you the opportunity to get a little ways away from the Salt Lake Valley. It gets you to go on a bike for at least a couple days. There's always wonderful people on that group. Sometimes it's the same group. We still, we have every, every year we have a, a few different people, but it just gives you the fall colors. It gives you going up over the high mountain peaks and 10,000 feet. You're down into Escalante, down into the lowlands, country similar like this. And it is just phenomenal. It's just the whole time. I mean, it's hard to ride because you want to just look the whole time. That's where the passengers really come in because they get to look all the time. You got to watch the road. The southern part of this state is beautiful. When you come to southern Utah, the red rocks and the green, just like what we're looking at right here, it does something to my soul. And maybe it's because I've spent so much time down here. It's why we do that ride every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why we do that at your leisure. Over the boulder, that's uh, a yeah. that's a. That Highway 12 one. is pretty hard to beat. And what's not to love about an experience like this? I was the first one in my family to have a motorcycle. My mother wasn't too happy about that, but it turned into something very special to all of us. Russell's busy at that store like I was. It's hectic, it's, it's uh, frustrating. You have good days, you have rough days, but when you're out here, we're together, we're father and son, we're doing something we both love to do, and all that stuff's put in the closet. So it just makes it great. If you want to learn more about Red, White & Road, you can go to the AYL website and sign up, or you can go to Stedman's website, or just go right on in, ask them about it, and join us. It's going to be a great trip. Well, for At Your Leisure, I'm Stephen Human. We need to take a commercial break, and we'll be back with more adventure. The Utah Farm Bureau began as a collection of farmers supporting each other to raise the food we enjoy. Today, Farm Bureau membership encompasses everyone, whether ranchers, growers, or just everyday folks like you and me. Members enjoy discounts on items like vehicles and ATVs, or insurance that's very affordable. You don't have to be a farmer to join, and dues are small, but together we make a big difference in keeping our food supply local and abundant. Join Utah Farm Bureau. The air is crisp, the sun is shining, the snow is deep. Living in Utah, we all know that the weather changes quickly. Don't miss one weekend of winter riding without a new Polaris snowmobile from Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. It's the Polaris factory authorized clearance. Right now, get financing as low as 3.99% for 36 months and a $2,000 rebate on all 2018 snowmobiles and a 3.99% for 48 months and a $400 rebate on select timber sled kits. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele has Utah's largest selection of recreational vehicles, including a huge selection of Polaris snowmobiles. Stedman's.net.
everybody, welcome back to At Your Leisure. I'm Rick Peterson. Today I'm here with Scott at Tunex in Cottonwood Heights to give you a few tips. Hey Scott, how, how you? you doing? Pretty good. I Thanks. see you're under the hood of your Jeep here. Tell us what you're checking to get ready for the year. You know, I'm checking all kinds of things today. So I want to make sure that everything under the hood is in good operating order and in good shape. So I'm going to make sure that such things as this belt up here is in really good shape, that these hoses are in good shape, that they're not swollen, they're not uh, soaked with oil, but even more so, I'm gonna make sure I have good clean oil. Brake fluid is very important. I wanna make sure the brake fluid is perfect. I'm gonna check the transmission, the power steering. I wanna make sure I have no contamination in any of those fluids. A clean air filter really does make a big difference. And this particular air filter is a K&N, it's a good breathing air filter. When you're on the trail, things get bounced around. Plus, you could be adding other accessories that draw the battery. What should we be checking before we hit the trail? The one thing I like to make sure of, first and foremost, is that my battery is fastened down, has a good hold down, so it's nice and tight. We've taken a great look underneath the hood. Now let's raise this thing up and look underneath. Second thing we're gonna look at now, Rick, is gonna be the tires. These tires are in good shape. They've got very good deep tread to them. But one of the large concerns as well is going to be the steering parts. Steering parts are gonna be under three times the stress that they are driving down the highway. So we wanna make sure that such things as the tie rod ends, steering linkages are in good shape, tight, they're capable of steering the vehicle and steering the vehicle with the front end under articulation. When you're on a 4x4 trail, there's little more important than your ability to steer, right? Steer exactly. and stop. Now let's go to the back and look at the next thing on the checklist, the suspension. Yes, Rick, suspension is one of the critical components of this Jeep and the off-roading, this track bar. It's connection points, it's ability to flex, and its ability not to move, much like the tie rod ends in the front, we cannot have any lateral movement of this component. One of the most common things we see on the trail are these bolts coming loose and sometimes falling out. That can be detrimental while you're out on a trail. So we like to always make sure that the bolts have exposed threads beyond the nuts, that they're torqued properly, and that the bushings and joints are flexing and moving, moving without lateral movement. Hey Scott, thanks for giving us a great list of tips so that we can really get out and enjoy our Jeeps this weekend. I know we only had a few minutes. Oh, I could go on for hours, days, even weeks about all the things that we could check. That's exactly why you should come see our friends at Tunex here in Cottonwood Heights, West Valley Hunter, and South Jordan. That's all the time we have today. We'll be right back with more at your leisure. Let's go try this thing yeah, out. Let's go. Hey, I'm driving. No, no, no. Oh, I'm driving, man. Get, get. Meet the new leader in off-road utility, the completely reinvented Ranger XP1000. It's got the most power, the largest towing capacity, the highest ground clearance, and the best comfort and storage. Introducing the all-new Polaris Ranger XP1000, the hardest working, smoothest riding Ranger ever built. There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised, where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at With the Ute Reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. Did you get enough of this this summer? If you didn't, there's still time. Remember that the Forest Service has dispersed camping where you can be away from the crowds and the RV pads because you have a fully self contained RV or camp trailer from Ray City RV. So, there's still time to get in for the beautiful fall weather at Ray City RV and you can be part of that dream. Check it out at Ray City RV, Utah's low price leader since 1946.
jump! <laughs> that wasn't very far. Not at all. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. We're out here on the Transcontinental Railroad Tour, and we are just loving it. This is so very cool. Oh, look, we got hey. fans back there. <laughs> all right. Hey, peace out. <laughs> So we are stopped right here. This is a very interesting and different trellis. Actually, it is now a box culvert. In the 20s and 30s, they built some of these culverts in here to make them a little stronger. And this one is a stone culvert. which is made out of really big rocks. It's original too. Yep. Well, there's so much more to see. Let's hit the road. You're seeing very much what it would have been like yeah. in the 1860s. It's largely what the Chinese and the Mormon contractors and the Irish supervisors would have experienced here in 1860. Well, look closely and you can see a rather large railroad spike that wants to come out. And we're going past all the remnants of these different towns that used to be out here. And they used to have them every 10 miles, which just surprises me, it boggles my mind how much it took to make a steam locomotive run. It's nothing like the Hollywood movies, you know? No. So we have a limited number of images of historic terrace, even though it was a sizable town. But this is probably one of the more compelling images because you can see the mountain in the background and the mountain in the background of this historic photo of downtown Paris. This hotel, you can see it right at your feet. That's water pipe and sewer pipe. Wow. It's yeah. just, it's hard to figure out how a building fell apart all the way over there and all the way over there. So, excuse me, I'm sorry, what, what is that? A headlight? Yep. What is that? That's, that? that's their headlight, right? Yep. At first I thought it was like a clock. Coal fired. And so I'm gonna walk you into Chinatown and show you material culture, the Chinese experience, so you can understand. Fine China, look at that. So, we're gonna leave it here for somebody else to discover, but there's stuff that's got printing on it, like Chinese dragons and stuff all over here in white China. So you can tell we are in Chinatown. Pretty cool, huh? This is a really neat, this is just really cool, I think. Something that you'd bring your family out to look at. I mean, this is Utah history, and it's like, it's world history. Chad, check out all this brick. Yeah, why aren't you, why aren't you singing your Brick House song again? We're a brick house. Yeah, mm. so where is it, where did this come from, really quickly? This, where did actually, this, come from? this actually is part of the office and the shop. Oh, that's right. This is not Utah brick, they imported it. Yep, so came it's from kind of California. Eh? California brick. Yep. Yep, and that's why it's so airy. Yeah. In fact, just a stone's throw from here, not where our crowd is from the BLM and the, and the state uh, history office, but is our Trailhead Adventure brought to you by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. They don't carry stuff like that there. Here it goes. Rodeos have been around now for almost 150 years with cowboys getting bucked into the dirt by horses and bulls while crowds cheer and count those eight seconds of each ride. Like most sports of its kind, rodeo though has evolved over the years. They've added different events like showing roping skills or horsemanship. But now, it's the days of ATVs on the ranch, and side-by-sides, -side. and rodeos have changed even more. Many events have replaced the cattle and sheep with tires and carburetors. It's the ATV Rodeo, and its popularity is growing at jamborees and OHV gatherings across the country. All right, tonight behind me is the ATV Rodeo, and it can be very uh, amusing. Uh, we do have trophies that we've had made that the top three, the first, second, third place will get trophies for it. Rodeo started as a way for cowboys and cowgirls to show their skills against their peers in competition. ATV rodeos follow that same principle, but here instead of tie down roping and steer wrestling, the competition focuses on proficiency behind the handlebars. The rules of ATV rodeos vary from event to event but most of them do include some kind of a purse, money like they have at the traditional livestock rodeos. This financial incentive forces riders to put every effort into winning the different rounds of competition. Many of the challenges are exactly the same as they would be on a horse, except you're on wheels instead of legs. Just like horse barrels in a rodeo, you have three barrels you have to go around in a certain pattern. Fastest time wins. You don't want to go outside the pattern or else you get no time. The second event is poles, and they're a set of poles that are set at equal distance, and you have to do a figure eight pattern all the way through and all the way back. What we call it is a blind man race, where the, the driver is blindfolded, 
and the passenger tells them where to go. Some of them get funny and you hear them, you see them pointing to go this way and the driver's blindfolded so he can't see that they're pointing to go that way. Being as how these are machines instead of animals, you can actually push them a little further. And so, unique obstacles have become the norm at jamborees in the western U.S. In fact, the mud pit is one of the more popular. Riders see how far they can push their machine through difficult terrain. The quad jump is another spectacle that pits rider against rider and machine against machine. We have a set distance and basically it's technique as far as jumping. If you're great at jumping, you're probably going to win it. So. And those jumps not only give the drivers, but the audience as well a shot of adrenaline. But what has become the showstopper at many ATV rodeos is a mixture of Hollywood westerns and good old-fashioned crazy. What we do in the hide race is you actually have two people out in the arena. There's one at the top of the arena, and then you say you're on a four-wheeler with a, a, like a rubber mat behind you, and you pull it around the arena and pick up your partner. Your partner has to jump on. And all, this is all done by time, so don't stop and hold on for dear life because you're going around two barrels. And once you make it around back around them two barrels, you have a mud pit you have to go through. Yeah, it's messy, but it is fun. And that's what rodeos are supposed to be about in the first place. Even the kids get involved. They're performing some of the same stunts as their parents, and they even have some of the same bragging rights. It's become a real family affair now where all ages are included. Organizers even sometimes just remove the ATVs altogether so the kids can have a good old time getting a little dirty, regardless of their ability to pilot a quad. The rodeo tradition is a celebration of a lifestyle that goes back to the early days of Western expansion. While ATVs and side-by-sides don't quite go back that far, they still fit into that Old West style of competition and hard work, just as well as the horses and the bulls. Now, it only stands to reason that their rodeos would be every bit as challenging and fun, and your ATV isn't likely to buck you off with the gusto or try to gore you like a bull would, but you still could end up with some bruises. Yep, it can hurt a little bit. From the trailhead, I'm Terry Wood. The Polaris factory authorized clearance is here. Get the year's biggest deals on the world's best selling off-road lineup. Chase Adventure on a legendary sportsman. Get more done with a hard working Ranger or attack the off-road with a high-performance Razor. Now's the time to buy with rebates up to $2,000 during the Polaris factory authorized clearance. Beautiful scene, isn't it? The great wide spaces of the wild, wild west. Hi, I'm Chad Booth, host of At Your Leisure. I'm asking you to support the Blue Ribbon Coalition their efforts responsibly preserve access to our public lands. If it were not for the Blue Ribbon Coalition and their efforts, you may not have access to millions of acres of land across the West. This is America's playground, and if we don't do anything, we are going to lose it. Join, participate, and donate. It's not about point A to B. It's about the things we find along the way and who's with us for the ride. This is the life we were born to live. The Can-Am Ready to Ride sales event is on now. Visit your local dealer for details. Chad, look at this cute little trestle. Uh-huh. Yeah, don't fall in the cracks. Oh, that's right. It's only like six feet down. It's not going to kill Six feet? Are you kidding me? Oh, look, totally Rhea. Oh, look, look. I know. This is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> really. There's just something to do out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this is this timber's still pretty heavy. I mean, I look know. at the size of this stuff. Yeah. So this is so the train actually came over this. Is it sure did? Yeah. <laughs> so cool. S several tons of it all at once. Just think, a big steel thing lined with bricks. Well, now we need to move on to our AYL sticker winner. Remember, get your stickers at any AYL sponsor, put them on your car, ATV, truck, RV, whatever, and then either get spotted by one of our crew or send us a photo on social media and you can win. 
Our lucky viewer this week is Kurt J, who posted his photos on our Facebook page. They have AYL stickers on both their machines. And Kurt, you just won a $400 gift certificate to Rifab Products, where you can get all sorts of aftermarket gear for your ATV and your side-by-side. -side. Call us this week at 801-947-8888, and we will get you your gift certificate. For everyone else, ask for those stickers at your local ATV dealer and get us your photos. All right, well, thanks for that chat. Now we have a few upcoming events to talk about. First off, September 8th at 5 p.m., UTV Utah is putting on a ride to help raise money for the victims of the Dollar Ridge Fire. The ride will be leaving from Carl Malone Polaris in Heber, Utah, and heading into the hills above the valley. All donations will go to help people who lost their homes in the fire, and it's a great way to lend a helping hand. If you can't go on the ride, you can still donate. Just go to the UTV Utah Facebook page, and they'll have all the details there about how you can help reach the goal of $50,000. Now the following week, September 14th and 15th, is of course Red, White and Road, Stedman's signature motorcycle event. Sign up at AYLTV.com before the event and save $5 off the registration fee. Chad and Rio will be there also, so we hope to see you on Red, White and Road, September 14th and 15th in Torrey, Utah. Okay, let's take a look at next week's show. What are the top 10 lesser known destinations in the state of Utah? We're finding out next week by talking to the experts. How many will you guess correctly? You'll have to wait and see. Then Zach Cipriano tries to eat his way across Utah, and he tries everything. And finally, Reese takes us to Africa because, hey, it's Reese, and he goes everywhere. <laughs> See you next week. Of course, not everything was building up to the railroad. Some of them had actually had to dig it a little bit. Yeah, there's a big friggin' blasting hole right here. Yeah, right? this is a cut. This is an area where you have to go below the natural grade to keep the grade of the locomotives nice and flat. So they just kind of dug a path right through the mountain here. Yeah. And of course, we're not going to go in there because there's a mama eagle, and I hear that they get like really yeah, persnickety. They'll, they'll pick you up and fly you away. Like giant tsetse flies, <laughs> yes. Anyway, this has been a lot of fun today, and we hope you've had a blast with the show. It's amazing. you got to get out here with your family, your friends, your 4x4s, and just enjoy the scenery and the history. That's true. Actually, the road's graded well enough. You could probably make it in a car if you took it nice and easy. But, man, soaking up the scenery is well worth it. Yeah. It, you get, you want to take your time. That's true. Remember, as we tell you every week, there's adventure around every single band. you just got to get out there and create your own adventure. At, at your, your leisure. leisure. We're going that way because the eagle is that way. Right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Reese got to go to the bathroom, so you go to the travel <laughs> adventure with Steve. Let's take a week at next week's... Oh, <laughs> woo!